My name is Zhe Zhou from Fudan University, and today I'm going to talk about some vulnerabilities in the mainstream mobile payment systems. So we know that mobile payment is so popular today, and, over, uh, and in the last year, over 60.7 trillion US dollar transactions was, was conducted in the mobile channel solely in China. And besides China, mobile payments are also available in a lot of countries like India, the USA. And with mobile payments, you can not only, you can not only eat at restaurants, pay, pay bills to tax driver, and go shopping, but also a lot, in a lot of scenarios. And the mobile payment services were operated by not only financial companies, but also internet companies. For the financial company, there are usually banks and uh, card associations. And the internet company includes something like Alipay and Tencent. And uh, I don't know if you know that mobile payments usually don't use network. Because firstly, a lot of transactions just happen indoors, where the cellular network is not good. And uh, Wi-Fi it's a, Wi-Fi in the mall is usually not available for guests. And in the network in initialization, it's always a very slow process. So if each transaction should be conducted through the internet, there must be a, a, a relatively long period of loading time for each, for each transaction. So the mobile payment scheme designers just decided to not use network, even if there is network, to avoid delays. And this is a widely deployed offline payment scheme diagram. To do a payment, the payment application firstly generates a piece of token for the user. The token is generated by hashing the time, the, the current time, the user ID, and the, and the secret key pre-shared between the user and the mobile service provider. And the token will be modulated to one of the channels. The channels can be something like QR code, audio channel, or just post machine channel. And then the smartphone will transmit the token via the channels, and then the token will be received by the vendor through the channel, and then the vendor will decode the token from the, from the received signal, and then pass the token to a backend server for verification. The server will firstly check if the token is indeed generated by the claimed user. By retrieving the secret key from the database using the user ID claimed by, 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 by the account associated with the token, and then use exactly the same hash algorithm to generate a token, and then compare the generated token with the received token. If they are exactly the same, that means the token is indeed generated by a authenticated, uh, authenticated user. And then check if the token is already used. The token is designed for one-time use only. So if the token were already met by the server, by the, server the token is regarded as invalidated. Then check the generation time. A token has a relatively short period, period of lifetime usually some minutes or half an hour. So if the, to if the token was generated long ago, it cannot be used to do a transaction. And we found that there are, at there are at least two weak points for the offline payment schemes. First one is that the token transmission is in a broadcast channel, indicating that there's no encryption during the transaction during the transmission, and the token can be sniffed by nearby adversaries. And the second, the token is not bounded with a specific transaction. So anyone sniffed the token can use the token to purchase at another place with, with, with money 
up to the daily limit. But the security is not that bad. Assuming that someone is purchasing using the mobile payment, th the mobile phone generates a token for the user and then transmits a token via a broadcast channel. The token can be received by the post machine and it can also be sniffed by an, by an attacker. However, the post machine will immediately send the token to back, back in the server for verification. And immediately the token is invalidated because the, the token is for one time use only. So the, the sniff the token is immediately invalidated and it cannot be used to purchase something at another place. However, we found that if we somehow can disconnect the post machine from the back end server, the sniff the token can be kept alive in a to, to launch attack. But for a practical attack, how can the how can an attack sniff a token via the physical channel? The channel, the, the, the channel including wireless signal, audio, and QR code. And so we devised at least one sniffing scheme for each channel. And the second the second question is how to interrupt the ongoing transaction. Because if the ongoing transaction is not interrupted, the token will be verified by the server and then immediately invalidated. And we targeted the mobile post machine and the vending machine, these two kind of post machines, where the, the transaction can be easily interrupted. And we also tried locally uh, method to to interrupt the, the transaction and the remotely method. And then the last question is how to spend a token, how to spend a sniff the token at another place. The first two problems are all solved and the, the last problem is not that difficult to solve. And then we talked about four kinds of payments. The first one is MST based mobile payment. MST based mobile pay payment is popular in the, in the USA because the vendors in USA are, are hesitated to update their post machines to support all kinds of new, newly emerging mobile payments. So most of vendors in the USA are still using the tra traditional magnetic strip card post machine and they don't update. However, a company named Lupe just found that the post machine come, a post machine comes with a magnetic head to sense the data stored in the magnetic strip card. When a user swipes magnetic strip card, the magnetic strip, which is uh, in fact magnetic materials, will stimulate the magnetic head inside the post machine, which is Consisted of, which consists of a, a coil and, a, and a, a magnetic circle, a magnetic ring. We know that the swiping magnetic strip will generate a varying magnetic field, and the coil, when it is exposed to a varying magnetic field, will generate electricity current, and the current is just the signal representing the data stored in the magnetic strip card. So a mobile phone company just acquired the, the, the company devising M MST. And to use the, the MST to make mobile payments, the phone is encrypted with a coil. The coil was also used to do wireless charging. And uh, when the mobile phone user used the mobile phone to make a payment, the, mo the mobile phone will generate a token and then modulate the token to electricity signal and then use the electricity signal to drive the coil. And, then, and, and uh, the coil of the mobile phone will generate magnetic field and the magnetic field will stimulate the coil of the magnetic head inside the post machine. 
So the traditional post machine, which was designed to support magnetic strip card only, can be used to do mobile payment. So in their scheme, a user need only put his mobile phone near to a post machine, and then the post machine will complete the token broadcast process. And then the post machine can receive the token and send it to back in the server for verification. And once the transaction is approved, the post machine just feel as if some a user is swiping a traditional magnetic strip card and print a slip for the user. We found that the scheme was claimed to work only in a three inch distance, which means the token can only be received in, a, in around seven centimeters. However, with our man-made coil antenna, we successfully received the token in two meters away from the, from the mobile phone, which means an attacker, if only he is standing near by the, by the, the counter, he can sniff the token. And then a lot of post machines are eventually mobile post machine, indicating that the post machine is connected to the backend server via wireless channel, which can be easily jammed using the commercial jammer. So when the channel between the mobile post and the backend server is in interrupted, the SNP the token can be kept alive and it can be transferred to another place to the colluder of the attacker for spending. The colluder need only use a very simple magnetic strip card writer to write the, re the SNP, the token, into a piece of blank magnetic strip card and just swipe the card at another counter to purchase things. And those pictures show the devices we use to launch attack. The, the leftmost one is a computer as well as, a, as well as the coil antenna. The coil antenna is connected to the computer via the 3.5 millimeter jacket, audio jacket. And the, le and the right picture is a commercial jammer which is purchased at Huachang North in Shenzhen. And this device can selectively jam wireless channels such as GSM, Wi-Fi, CDMA, DCS, PCS. And then the middle one is a commercial strip card writer. It can help attackers to write, to write any data into, the, into a blank magnetic strip card. The cost of the attack is very, very cheap around 20 to 30 US dollar. And the, the second target is a SoundPay. SoundPay is widely deployed by vending machines because of its low cost. The vending machine need only add a recorder to support this kind of mobile payment. When a user is going to use SoundPay, his mobile phone will generate a piece of a token and then modulate the token into a clip of audio. And then the mobile phone will play the audio. The audio can be recorded by the vending machine and then the token can be decoded. And then the vending machine just send the token to backend server for verification. Usually it's via a little network because people may move the vending machine from one place to another. So usually it is not wirely connected. And similarly, we found that this token can also be sniffed by the attacker by simply just turning on a recorder. And uh, the connection between the server and the vending machine can just also be jammed by the jammer. And the, the, the recorded token can just be replayed by playing the recorded audio to purchase in another vending machine. 
and the left two attacks are based on QR code. QR code is an extremely popular payment method. And there are two mods for QR code mobile payment. The first one is B2S mod, in which a, a phone just scans the QR code printed by the vendor to pay to the vendor. And the second is B2L mod, where a payer just presents the QR code generated by his mobile phone under the post scanner of the vendor to pay to the vendor. And our work based on the, the second type, B2L mode. So the QR code is generated by the mobile phone carrying a token. Okay, the first question is how to sniff a live QR code token. This is a picture taken by the front camera of a mobile phone. We know that from the right side picture, we, we know that the token, the QR code token can just be sniffed by watching the reflection from the post scanner. So the attacker need only in, in, infect the victim by installing a malware and the malware need only turn on the front camera during the transaction. So the QR code is reflected and captured by the front camera. But a more important question is how to keep the QR code alive. Because if no special measures is taken, the QR code will be simultaneously scanned by the post machine and be used to do verification. So it will be invalidated immediately. So the malware need only draw a white block over the positioning mark of the QR code. Because one of the positioning mark of, a, of the QR code is, is overlaid, so the QR code can no longer be scanned by the post machine scanner. However, the token is still there. So the token is kept alive in this way. And the QR code, QR code image through the glass of the, through the length of the QR of the post scanner can be sent to the cluder of the attacker for spending. Besides this attack, we, ha we have also found a security flaw of the QR code payment. The QR code can, can carrying a payment token is meant to be very sensitive because anyone with this token can make a purchase. However, in the implementation, the QR code is also used, uh, used as a name card for many transfer, which means the payment QR code can be scanned by post machine to make a payment. Make a payment. Also, it can also be scanned by your friend. If your friend wants to transfer money to you and he doesn't know your account number. And we found that during this process, one could be attacked, even if he is never infected with malware. If he just use a face-to-face -face money transfer and he's a payee, if the, the payer, just your friends, is infected. Because the malware inside, malware inside the payer can have the same UI as the mobile payment. And when the malware detects, detected that the authentic, the authentic mobile payment app is in the forefront and the camera is being, is being using, the mobile payment is scanning. And the malware just jumps to the forefront to capture a live QR code. And more importantly, how to keep the QR code alive. The malware cannot quit immediately because if, if the malware quit immediately, the, code, the, the token will be consumed by the authentic payment application. But if the malware stay here, 
the process will be noticed by the user because the transaction is not going on. So the malware need only launch a Bluetooth pairing process. By launching a Bluetooth pairing process, the, the mobile phone of the payee will show a confirmation window to ask the user to confirm the pairing process. And then, immediately, the malware cancel this process, so the window will dis disappear. This process may only remain for hundreds of milliseconds, which means there will be only a flash in the victim's mobile phone. And then, the live token is sneaked and kept alive because a new token is generated in the victim's phone. Because the mobile, pay mobile payment application in the victim's phone is put into background and then pulled to the foreground. So a new QR code is generated. And this new generated QR code will be used to continue the normal transaction. Okay. After we finished the four attacks, we reported to their service providers, including the, 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 the largest mobile payment service provider in China. And that service provider immediately re revoked the payment application, QR, the payment QR code as name card in around a week after we, our report. And for the reflection attack, they committed to do a background check to, in, to ensure that there is no background application using the front camera when the transaction is ongoing. And uh, we learned a lot from those attacks. The payment token is so sensitive. So it should be, it should be carefully treated when it's being transmitted to the mobile post machine. It shouldn't be transmitted over a simplex channel that doesn't have challenge response process. And there must be anti-sniffing protections. And the token should be bound to a transaction when it's generated. In that case, even if a token is sniffed by an attacker, the attacker cannot spend it at another place. Okay, that's all of the presentation. Thank you for your time and any question.